The progressive quilt campout is complete, folks, and a quick spoiler alert, as you can see on the side wall here, the quilt really does get finished, and I did the entire thing while camping through the Pacific Northwest over two weeks. Can you believe it? That's right, this is summer camp, and the quilt is designed by my dear friend Charisma Horton, and in the next series of videos, I will take you outdoors to a different incredible location, block by block, and teach you all the steps you need to know to create this quilt all on your own. The final steps, we end up at Charisma's house and we actually quilt the quilt with her and learn all kinds of other information that's very important to how we pick and plan for our quilting. So it's an entire series. It'll last over several weeks and I really, really hope you enjoy it. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel, comment and share the video. That's how we know that you really are loving this amazing outdoor adventure content so we can create more for you. And with that said, are you ready? Let's get on with the adventure. Well, well, welcome back to So Well in the Woods. Isn't this amazing? This is Rob Appel coming to you from Stitch in Heaven. And right now I'm along the wonderful McKenzie River. This is uh, kind of central uh, Western Oregon. And I just absolutely love this location. And I'm so glad you were all here with me today to enjoy this awesome tutorial. Now, remember we are working on the summer camp uh, quilt by Charisma Horton. The entire quilt finishes, let me just remind myself, 60 inches by 72 inches and it's a super fun multi-block where you're going to learn a lot of different skills in this or just refresh your skills. It's super fun, super easy and today's video is actually the beginning of the project. I'll be shooting it in as many different locations as possible but maybe you can tell I'm actually being rained on as I'm trying to film. So I'm going to do my best. We're going to have a lot of fun. Let's dive right in today we're going to discuss a couple blocks but we're really only going to work on our stars block right so let me bring this pattern back in real close uh, so you can see nice here now when you look at the pattern and or the cutting instructions I've already been marking all over the first couple cuts call for a 12 and a half inch square. So let me point out, remember I promised all of you new quilters a super simple block. That's right, right here in the project there is a 12 and a half inch solid square that fills in the night sky. Now the second one we will be doing an applique, a raw edge applique of this awesome moon and that will be in our next tutorial because we are now following the instructions as they go. So we're working on making these uh, five stars right now. I've got four already constructed. We're using our shadow blush fabrics from Ben Artex. It is the blue background. We have the gold and we have the yellow fabrics being used today. So just those three. And as we dive in, I have four of the units already made. So we're going to make our last one together. How fun is that, right? So, like I mentioned earlier, those, those, there are those 12 and a half inch solid squares cut from the information, but we get to those later. One is already a finished square. Told you it was easy. For the star block, we're going to need a large uh, background color square and then four smaller squares from the background. We need a slightly smaller square of our brighter yellow and then the golds these squares are a little bit larger, and of course I'm encouraging you to pick up the pattern so you know the measurements. That's the way we support Charisma and her wonderful designs out there, and all of the other quilters that work so hard at making fantastic patterns. And I just want to say thank you to Charisma for allowing me to use this awesome, awesome summer camp quilt for my quilting camping uh, adventure so long. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and just mark on the back side of all of our four different yellow smaller squares. Excuse me, the, those are the gold smaller squares. So now we're just going to go ahead and mark diagonal from edge to edge with a chalk pencil. Okay, and now what we're going to do, if you've seen any of my videos on flying geese, we were talking about how we do the magic flying geese block. So now what we want to do, folks, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to lay with our fabrics right sides together. We have our large blue square, and I'm going to position one of my yellow squares, and then here's got a really nice line on it, the second yellow square, and I want to point out real quick 
the diagonal runs right through. These are going to be our guidelines for stitching. So we are going to sew a quarter inch on either side of those. I recommend you put a couple of straight pins through. And when I was at Alex Anderson's home a few days ago, I stole some of her sewing supplies. One is their wonderful Quilter Select Rotary Cutter. I'm already absolutely in love with this. She gave me some pins. I didn't get any out, but let me grab some real quick. <laughs> I'm afraid I was going to get in trouble for that. Oh my gosh, I haven't even opened it yet. But she told me I would need these, and yes, she is. Oh, that's neat. They're magnetic. Pin cushion. Ooh, I like that. Okay, sorry. Back to the show at hand. Let's go ahead and put a straight pin to secure and a straight pin here to secure. Now, we're not going to sew over those pins. Those are just holding everything in place. As we come on over to my sewing machine here, and I'm just going to go ahead now and stitch on this left-hand side a quarter inch. I do like to pull the pin out right before I get to it. Don't want to stitch over that. And now as we come to that union, we're both squares. Just make sure there's no rippling or puckering. And we'll go ahead and sew through right like that. Now we're just going to go ahead and rotate around this corner. So I'm just cutting my threads. And now we're going to sew right back down this other line on the other side. We won't point out that I could use a little more practice sewing straight with the old singer, but I'm just going to lay a ruler on here and cut now right along that sewing line. Or excuse me, cut right along that drawn line. Now, once these two pieces have been um, cut, we're going to go ahead and press them up. Press into the small squares away from the big center square. So that it looks kind of like a raccoon head like that. Okay, wonderful. So now you should have two of these established. Take those last two squares that you've already marked with your diagonals on and go ahead and drop those. Make sure though you get them right sides together. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch from the corner up on one side of the line to secure and then it'll be easier to rotate. So this is just again, another diagonal stitch mark line. We're going to sew a quarter inch on both sides and just go ahead and sew right off that top edge there. And then once I've gone ahead and done that, I'm just going to flip it around before I start on the second unit there. Now that that second side's secured to save a little bit of thread, I'm going to go ahead and start on the first pass on the second piece. Now I can just go ahead and trim off the first one, set that aside for a moment here in the rain, let the uh, raindrops get on it so it's pre-moistening for our steaming here. Okay, so we have both of these stitched through, so the exact same thing. We wanna go ahead and cut these now, and I just like to use a ruler to protect my hands. So I've cut those two, Going to go ahead and cut these. Excellent. And the same thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and press away from that blue background color into the yellow on all four of these pieces. I hope you can hear the instructions over the raging river behind me. And I have to admit, I think it'd be really cool if a couple of big bull trout jumped out while I was performing this tutorial. But I don't think it's going to happen. But that's what we're apparently in bull trout territory, folks. Now, really, this is the most sewing, this is the most technical portion of all of our star 
unit, our star block. So let me just show you again what it looks like. See, real simple and easy. So you just created all four of those points uh, in what we call a flying goose or flying geese uh, block now. So that's what we have, we have four of those. So now let's return to our center yellow, right? And now these are just gonna match up on two sides, but just make sure that you're pointing away. So we're gonna get those stitched on real quick. I like to try to catch the tip of that uh, flying goose union right up there with my thread at the quarter inch and that makes that tip real nice, that point real nice there when you're sewing. And because we're not crossing our threads yet, just make sure you have your everything established correctly, your orientation correctly, and then just let's match these up and stitch these on as well. Always a good idea to press after each of our seams. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these here a little bit. Well, and actually, now that all of our cutting is done, I can go ahead and move my awesome Martelli mat out of the way so we can see a little better what we're doing here. Oh, and for these, I'm gonna press into the center yellow because it doesn't have any patchwork going on, so that makes that easier. Pressing into that yellow. Okay, that's very easy. But before we can go any further with this unit, like this, we need to go ahead and get our cornerstones on. So that's gonna be real easy. You have your two remaining flying geese, and you should have four remaining squares in your background color. So go ahead and take those and just sew them onto the yellow corners the yellow short ends. And just one at a time putting on those, what will become our cornerstones, our blue squares onto the edges of our flying geese. And pressing those into the blue, because that will be easiest as well. Go ahead and get the other side put together. And then once you have both of your long edges looking just like this, just make sure you're checking your orientation so your points are pointing all the way out. And then go ahead and just kind of line up those seams there and we're gonna get this final stitching going on. We'll press that over. And at this point, I'm just kind of pressing away from center out into the seam there. Okay, so we've got that edge on. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, press this over. Kind of pushing up into the uh, patchwork part now. Seems to be easiest. And we just have our last side. Oh no, I ran out of bobbin thread. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't you know it. Let's see, do I have another bobbin here? Ah, not too bad, even with a bobbin change on the fly there. Let me just go ahead and get this pressed out so you all can see it. Timing's just about right. You can see it's actually getting darker and darker as I finish making up this wonderful star block. I can tell you can barely even see me over there, so let me bring it so you can see it just a little bit better. Doesn't that look awesome? Oh my gosh. Fantastic, and that is the star block from the summer camp quilt from Charisma Horton. Now, we are going to make many, many more blocks together in these wonderful locations while I have fun traveling through the Pacific Northwest. On my way to Charisma's home, my goal is to show up at her house with all of the blocks completed. So please, in the comments below, let me know what you think of these wonderful outdoor videos. I really appreciate you following along and we'll see you very, very soon to show you how to put together the moon. <laughs> I like the way that sounds. Okay, folks, have a great rest of your adventure and remember, stay well.
Hey friends, Rob Appel along the McKinsey River. Louie and I are making a quilt block along our big Pacific Northwest quilting progressive uh, camp adventure, whatever we're calling this thing. Having a blast. You probably can't even hear me, the river's so loud, but love having you along. Thanks for joining me.